Welcome to Encounter the Word. We at the Jesuit Institute offer this reflection every Sunday on the Liturgy of the Word, where we try to make sure that our reflection on God's Word helps us live God's Word in our daily lives. And so, let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can gather as a community to reflect upon your word and how your word invites us to respond at this moment in our lives and the life of our community and our society. Help us through our listening to deepen our ability to hear what you want of us so that we might live this word in practical ways in the days that are to come. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Daniel. As I looked, thrones were placed, and one that was ancient of days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven there came one like a son of man, and he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is king, the most high above all the earth. The, the Lord, Lord is king. The, the Most High above all the earth. The Lord is King. Let earth rejoice. Let the many islands be glad. Cloud and darkness surround him. Justice and right are the foundation of his throne. The, the Lord, Lord is King. The, the Most Lord High above, above all the earth. The mountains melt like wax before the face of the Lord. Before the face of the Lord of all the earth. The skies proclaim his justice. All peoples see his glory. The, the Lord, Lord is King, the Most High above all the earth. For you indeed are the Lord, Most High above all the earth, exalted far above all gods. The, the Lord, Lord is King, the, the Most High above all the earth. A reading from the second letter of Peter. Beloved, we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We heard this voice, born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have the prophetic word made more sure. And you will do well to pay attention to this, as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Hallelujah. A 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were filled with awe. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This year, the Feast of the Transfiguration falls on a Sunday. This gives us the occasion to reflect more deeply on the meaning of this feast. Jesus is offering his disciples a momentary vision of his glory. On the mountaintop, he appears with the two figures who represent the promise in the Old Testament, Moses and Elijah. This focus on the promise is meant to strengthen the disciples and us on our way to Jerusalem, to Golgotha, and the cross. In fact, what we see is not only Jesus' brilliance without any shadow of darkness, sin, and death, but in gazing on him, we see also our own ultimate destiny. As Paul writes in the Epistle to the Romans, Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship, so as not to be conformed to this world, but be transfigured by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Peter seeks to grab this momentary vision and hold on to it, he suggests making tents so that he and his companions can stay on the top of the mountain, contemplating the glory. In the Old Testament, the Feast of Tents was a marking of the final harvest and also a premonition of the Messianic age, when all peoples would gather around the mountain of the Lord in Jerusalem and recognize his dominion. Peter seems to want to impose this meaning on what he sees. Jesus is transfigured, is the end of the story. However, in this wrong understanding, Peter is resisting yet again the fact that Jesus must go down the high mountain to his suffering and death in Jerusalem. Peter would prefer, rather, to enshrine Jesus on the mountain, staying there in serene contemplation. However, Jesus is not to stay on the mountain under a tent, must, but must go to Jerusalem, where he will suffer much and be crucified. Jesus had revealed this to Peter just six days before the transfiguration at Caesarea Philippi, saying that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering. In fact, we can conclude that the beginning of this narrative about the transfiguration is not only underlying what happened six days before, but is also marking a seventh day, the day of the transfiguration as a Sabbath day, 
a day to rest, to give thanks, to marvel at the work of God and recall its final aim. The transfiguration reveals Jesus as the image and likeness of God in which the human person was created. It is this image and likeness that was obscured by sin and which Jesus has now come to restore. The work still lies ahead, but the vision of the transfiguration is a moment to refocus, to remember what the goal is and gather strength and courage to continue on the way forward. The restoration will be a dramatic saga that will reach its fulfillment in Jesus' passion and death on the cross. Yet Peter seems to have misunderstood again. There is a parallel between Peter's refusal of Jesus' suffering in Caesarea Philippi, where he blurted out, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. And his desire now to build the tents to restrain Jesus from going down the mountain. His words bring an end to the vision, and Jesus is proclaimed yet again the Son of God, the one who is in the process of restoring us to God's likeness, refocusing on our vocation to be sons and daughters of God. It is interesting to remember that 40 days after the transfiguration on September 14th, the church celebrates the exaltation of the cross. There is still a time of wandering in the wilderness of this world that separates between the transfiguration and the peak of the story in Christ's crucifixion. It is under the cross that the disciples of Christ find their tent. It is in its shadow that they gaze at his crucified body and discover themselves as sinners loved by God, thirsting to find their way home into the embrace of God. The transfiguration reminds us of our destiny. As Paul writes in his second epistle to the Corinthians, we will have unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, and we will be transfigured into the same image from one degree of glory to another. Let's join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the The kingdom, kingdom, the power, and and the glory are yours, now and and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, friends. Lord, we give you thanks that we could encounter your word, that we could reflect upon your word, And help us now to deepen our reflections as we try to live out the invitation that you have for each one of us. And in so doing, become your faithful disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to have you reflecting with us again next week.